First phase of delivery I want to talk about is the balance phase. Balance phase meaning getting to a balanced, comfortable position with great posture. Keeping my nose over my back toe and keeping my head over my back leg. Staying over the rubber, get a 45 degree turn, making sure I'm pivoting my foot in, in the rubber. Notice my eyes are staying on my catcher when I do this. I'm not looking down at my feet, trying to see how to place my feet. And the last minute I pick up my target. Always keep your eyes on your catcher. Balance phase, I get a pivot and I get a balance and I get a turn. Notice my posture, my spine alignment, my spine angle is upright. It's not back here, it's not leaning here. Good balance, good posture, per first part of the phase of the delivery. I want to focus on being able to put my back pocket right on my catcher. I want to make sure my front hip is closed, my knee, my ankle, and my shoulder. Four points. If I were to put a point here, point here, point here, point here, those stay locked in route to my target. Now my balance position here takes me into my stride phase. I have an imaginary string from my knee to my glove. For your younger kids, you want to think string puppet. If my knee goes down, my hands follow. Same time. You want rhythm, timing, hand separation. So when my leg goes down, my gloves follow, I want to cover up my back leg. That gets me back on target on my center line straight to my catcher. Balance, stride towards my target. Notice my weight is back. It's not forward. My gloves not flying open. My elbows not below my shoulder. Balance, stride, throw. Find a good comfortable rhythm, timing sequence that works for you, hand separation. What you're looking for is the arm to be up in a powerful position by the time your front foot hits the ground. Forty-five degree angle pivot. We want to make sure we don't go way back here. I see a lot of young kids want to rock back here really far and think that gives them the momentum and power to throw this ball harder. In reality, it just took my head good two feet offline. I, my whole body, my head left the rubber. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a small pivot, 45 degree angle, my head's still on line with my target. When I pivot, I'm still here. I want to tell my kids they want to think the shoulders are a bow and arrow, pointing straight towards my catcher. When my hands separate, Notice how I take my palms, my thumbs down. I'd like to take my thumbs down because it keeps my front shoulder closed longer and it keeps me stacked here in this position longer. I tell my younger kids, I use my left elbow as a scope. I looked off my left eye and I let my lead elbow guide my throwing hand to where I want to replace my hand. That gives me a visual. And I want to make sure I get out front with that. Always keeping the wrist back behind the ball, staying through the baseball, getting good wrist snap, good fingers. A good wrist snap makes a good pitcher out front. Balance. Start my separation. Stride. Like to keep my glove up in front of my face. Now, you're going to see this a lot. A lot of guys like to go this way. Notice that my elbow's behind my shoulder now and I'm already starting to open. My belly button's almost on my catcher right now. I gotta rewind this. At this point, I should still be here. Remember the four points we talked about. Shoulder, hip, knee, ankle, closed. At foot strike, those four points must remain locked. When I feel, when I feel those four points hit, then I get to unlock. It's a tuck. I like to tuck my elbow to my hip, my glove to my armpit. Every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if I can tuck my arm tight, my hand's gonna come through faster. For my younger kids that I talk to, I like to talk to them about the crash test dummy commercials. If the car hits the wall and the dummy's not wearing a seat belt, the dummy flies through the windshield. So we're gonna use that same analogy as in my elbows the car, my hip is the brick wall, my throwing arm is the dummy and he doesn't have a seat belt. So the faster I tuck this and stay on line and use my torso, my hand's gonna come through that zone that much quicker.
Now let's talk about delayed shoulder rotation. Delayed shoulder rotation means my front shoulder stays closed as long as possible. I want to let my core and my arm work together with my lower half and my back hip. Get to my balance point, I get to here. Delayed shoulder rotation means my front shoulder is not open yet. It's still closed. My throwing shoulder is far away from my front hip right now. Now I can maximize my core and still fire this ball online. Ready, Gabe? Now we're going to talk about a common fault in a lot of pitchers, and you see it in minor leaguers too. One thing you want to make sure is you stay closed all the way until you land. I tell my younger kids, if you see a rubber band and you pull it this far, how much power is that? And I let it go. It's not that powerful. Pull a little bit more, it's a little powerful. I get as much as I can, and it's very strong. I stretch it to its limit, and then it's ready to, to explode. You'll see a kid get to his balance point. You'll see him fly open before he even lands. Remember, now my belly's already on my target. My front shoulder's facing towards first base. My arm's away from my head. A, I'm going to have release point issues. I just lost command. I just lost velocity. And I put a lot of wear and tear on my elbow and my shoulder. That's a red flag in the delivery. But it's very fixable. There's a lot of drills to fix that. I'll show you one more time. 